and welcome to Out and About Art, your PGTV source for all things art in Polk County. I'm your host, Yasmeen Ali. First up this month, we're unveiling a temporal exhibit called Nesting Instinct. This is the first installment of an exciting new initiative from the Polk County Parks and Natural Resources Division called Art in the Park. Lakeland artist Marsha Morris Mullins spent months creating this unique art exhibit, manipulating living vines into a collection of nest-shaped weavings. As time passes, the living vines will grow together with the art that Marsha has manipulated, and eventually, the artwork will slowly return to the woods from which it came. Check this out to learn about the Art of the Park initiative and its first installment, Nesting Instinct. We had just gone through our master planning process for parks, recreation, and preserves. And in that, of course, because the, the comprehensive plan calls for art, the master plan calls for art. Luckily, we have a local artist, uh, Marsha Morris Mullins, who uh, works in basketry. And I know her work from uh, Michigan. Uh, she did a, a living basket in a lilac tree um, back in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. So I called upon her and I said, well, this would be possibly another living basket project. So with that kind of an opportunity um, opened up to us, uh, we had uh, Marcia walk through Boise Hart Park to take a look at what the possibilities were. She saw this massive tree here and was immediately struck by it. So using the natural materials at hand, Marcy started working on her baskets. My undergraduate degree is in botany, so, so I have a very strong connection to plants. Um, within my basketry work, I, <clears throat> I work strictly with natural materials. Um, I, I'm, I'm known for dissecting an ash tree. Um, I start with the tree and, and take it down into its individual growth rings and then take the growth rings down to little tiny splint before I can even start weaving. Um, so, I, so I have a very strong connection to using natural materials in my work. Um, and vines just lend themselves to that. Sometimes they'll bend, sometimes they won't. So this installation started with this piece. Um, which is rooted underneath the large basket. All the swirlies on the bottom are coming up from the roots. And I pulled a bunch of vines down out of the tree. So some of it is still alive and has, it, it's starting to take the, the, the basket back over again. And then from there I moved over to the tree itself and started pulling vines together over there. and. Uh, creating some additional uh, nest-shaped pieces. Um, this installation is called Nesting Instinct, and because uh, that's just kind of was my feeling when I saw all of these, these vines, is that it just felt like there should be a bunch of nests under this tree. So um, the portion of it that is kind of wrapped around the tree itself, um, is very much growing. In fact, every time I come back, there's all kinds of new growth that I pull back down out of the tree and weave back around through the piece. So it's, it's very dynamic. Um, it's a, a very temporal installation that um, I don't know how long it will last. Uh, art makes people think. Art makes people relax. Um, and one of the things that people need to do when they get out to our parks is to de-stress. It's very important for people to reconnect with nature. And we try to uh, provide for folks who can't bring a whole bunch of, of uh, plants into their small apartment possibly, or their dorm room. They can go out and walk in the quiet, um, see some plants, see some animals, that sort of thing. So. Um, it's just a natural match for parks and recreation. By doing a piece like this, you can have a vision and an idea of, of, of what you want to create, but then when you get to the material and you find that, oh, I thought I was going to take that down out of the tree so that I could do this with it. Well, it's not going to let go. It's up there in the canopy and it's not coming down. Okay, plan B. So there's a lot of, of, of stepping back 
reevaluating the material, getting a feel of what it is going to do, what it's not going to do, and um, and then going from there. So um, that just adds to the organicness of the piece um, because it's it just can't be completely planned out in advance. If you look up in the tree, there's a green man, the head of a green man up there, um, and uh, his his beard was all it was full of green leaves when I first uh, finished it. But that he's not his face is not alive, so his. His, uh, his beard has dried and gotten gray, so he's aging in front of my eyes. Um, he's the part that I expect will probably come down with the, with the first hurricane, but who knows? It, it's, you know, that, that's what temporal art is all about. Um, eventually, the nature will take this piece over again, and uh, so it will, it will always be changing, growing, dying, living. I anticipate that eventually this piece will completely um, be retaken by Mother Nature. We have 102 parks across Polk County. Uh, everything from our, our um, off-highway vehicle park at Bowen Valley where you can ride your quad uh, to uh, a number of small boat ramps um, which may just be a boat ramp and a picnic table and, and, a, and a place to uh, a washroom or something like that to, to large regional parks like uh, this one here at Lois Hart Park. Um, so we have a lot of places that we can, uh, we can install art. That's appropriate to the, uh, to the, uh, the setting it's in. It'd be nice to get you know, a sculpture of a, a football player, a baseball player uh, for some of our sports oriented uh, parks. So we're, we're gonna be looking for sponsors who might wanna donate something like that. And again, it, it has to go through the approval process to, to be accepted to the park as a donation. Uh, it's important to have art that uh, falls in line with our mission of improving the quality of life for uh, the residents and visitors to Polk County. So there are a number of criteria that we have. We have a panel of folks who know art and uh, we, we take a look at each project individually and see if it's suitable. It may not be suitable for Polk County uh, parks, it may be suitable for uh, another location. We don't try to make judgment about our people's art. One person's art is, is not to everyone's taste. But we try to do something that is, connects with, the, with nature, which is one of the reasons that the baskets came in. Is it's, it's part of our mandate, uh, natural resources, uh, wise stewardship, and getting the public involved in our parks. I, I sell my artwork um, for example, I'll be, I'll be at Mayfair this year. So, um, you know, I set up my 10 by 10 tarp and, and, and my display, and, and it's a whole different environment than this. So it's, it's an opportunity to show what else I can do to stretch my skills as an artist and work within the natural environment, much like a painter doing a plein air painting, live painting um, out in the environment. So it's, um, I think it's an exciting opportunity. Um, I also like the idea of being able to do this within the county park system. Gives us as, as artists an opportunity to have public art that's not in downtown Lakeland. That's not in downtown Winter Haven, that is removed from the city environment and, and installed in a more natural environment in an area that doesn't have a lot of public art. Venture off the main road a little bit. Um, walk back to a, a lake and, and experience that. It's a matter of getting out, switching up your daily activities a little bit, um, and I think that that's one of the reasons for doing this art in the park is, is uh, to give people another, another venue for experiencing the natural environment. To keep up with future art in the park installations, visit www.polk-county.net slash natural hyphen resources. You can also learn more about Marsha and her artwork by visiting www.borderweave.com. Next up is our monthly artist spotlight. 
Katie Fernandez is an artist and art teacher from Auburndale who continuously challenges herself to study new types of art. Her latest series of paintings is a remarkable set of photorealistic silhouettes. Check this out to learn about Katie's art process, her silhouette paintings, and how she hopes to inspire her students through the power of art. My name is Katie Fernandez and I am an artist and an art teacher. Um, my favorite kind of art to do is really, I like to do different things, I like to challenge myself. So I'll usually find something that I think is really cool or interesting and I want to um, try to do it myself. But maybe kind of give it my own little take on it. So recently I've been doing, for like probably the past year and a half, I've been doing these silhouette paintings. which. Um, have been challenging in the sense that I make them really big and every time I do one I try to go maybe a little bigger because I do little things to it to make it look realistic like little wisps of hair or maybe there's just a little bit of a glow on the side of the face and I like to paint because it's challenging for me. I have always been more of a drawer and graphite with like pencil has always been more of my medium that I felt like I had the most control over and but in order to do that challenging of myself, like, it was like I need to do some, I need to work with a medium that I'm not as comfortable with. So that's why I kind of tried to, you know, start doing with paint. When I paint, I always try to paint in a series. Like I'll, I'll do one thing for a while and then I'll switch and do something else. So like I said, for the past like year and a half, I've been doing the silhouette paintings. That picture back there was the first one I did. It was actually a photograph of my cousin, well, my cousin's daughter, so she's like my second cousin, she had taken this, this picture, this black and white picture of her friend. And I just loved it because you couldn't tell if it was a boy or a girl in the picture. And I really liked that aspect of it. And it, I thought to myself, you don't know who this kid is. It could be a kid that's just a street kid. It could be some, you know, rich little girl who likes to be a tomboy. It could be a boy who's, you know, wearing his hair long, maybe, you know, it could be, like, you, you could, there's no way to really know because you cannot see this person. And so that's where that inspiration for doing the silhouettes came from. And I like to just, I, I sit on the floor when I paint, I don't use an easel, I just kind of prop my canvas up against the wall and I lay out a towel with my, you know, paints and I'll usually have three or four different palettes because I'll mix um, I usually kind of will start with a darker kind of set of colors and then slowly gradually go into a medium set of colors and then a lighter set of colors. Once I have those three kind of levels of color um, and then they're kind of really, you know, I've got, I have them blended really well, that's when I feel like I can go on to the next step. And I just kind of like, you know, every so often I'll just sit back. I like to do it all in one sitting. Like I'll typically once I do the background, I'll sit and kind of just chill for like, 20 minutes or so because acrylic paint dries really fast so because I'm in the mode like I don't want to really step back for too long because I don't know if I'll come back to it for another day or two or week or two. I went through a period of time like when I went to college just doing psychology and I got my psychology degree but thinking that maybe someday I would do something like art therapy like where I could maybe use art for other people to because sometimes that's therapy for people, you know, to be able to create. And they can get out emotions and things like that they're feeling. And so I thought, well, maybe I'll go that route with my psychology degree. But of course, I ended up in just like a corporate job, not really doing anything. But then when I had my son, I decided I really wanted to do something important that, you know, had some impact on the world. If you want to be able to really do something you're going to love doing, then you have to make sacrifices and you have to be risky and, and it's scary but I was fortunate enough that I had a mom and dad that were able to financially help me so that I could take classes at Polk State so that I could really kind of hone the craft and plus it really is helpful to have classes you know under your you know like to be able to say like okay I've taken this I know how to do this I know how to teach this yeah, having my son really definitely prompted me to want to do something, you know, that I love to do. I want him to see me 
doing something I love and enjoy, and I do, I love teaching. Like, it's, it can be very stressful. People say teachers have the hardest job. They do. Maybe not a specialist teacher like me, because when you're an art teacher, typically your students want to be in here, and they love art, and that was what a lot of people told me. Well, if you teach art, you know, kids like art, because I was really nervous. It's, it, I was like, I've never taught in my life. I've never, you know, been in a classroom other than when I was a student. So it's definitely, you know, intimidating to do that. But I just knew that I wanted my son to be able to see me doing something I love and for him to be inspired by that. And it's actually really awesome because I, you know, occasionally I'll just say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he'll say, a teacher. I feel like in Polk County, the arts have been getting more attention. I see it because when I work with the museum, with Polk Museum, and I see the crowds that start or that are coming in to like take classes or, or you know, or even just to come look at the museum, it's so encouraging. I one thing about being an educator is I get to take my fourth grade students to the museum every year. I get to take the whole fourth grade class and then they get to have a whole new appreciation for a museum and a lot of them have never been in one before. I mean, I'll we'll ask, how many of you have been to the Pope Museum before? And maybe two or three of them raise their hand. So now they're getting this opportunity to go. I'm telling them, hey, it's free, bring your parents, come back. You know, look how calm and quiet and nice and peaceful it is here and look at what you're getting to see. I mean, you're getting to see some amazing things that maybe have been around for hundreds of years and they're so mind blown by that. You don't have to be good at art, I feel like, to appreciate it. Um, I think when we support that, it, it offers not just a broadening of, the, of everyone's horizons, but just, like, I don't know, it has a calming effect, I think. I think people really, when they buy a piece of art, which, you know, is so important for a local artist, it, it's it's like you're buying a little part of them and you're buying a little part of something that has a whole bigger meaning to it. It means so much to know that something that you've worked so hard on has actually made an impact on somebody else to the point that they want to buy that. And it makes you feel like people care. And, you, and, and it, that's what keeps artists going. I mean, what would we do if like, people didn't support the arts? We'd probably, there wouldn't be any of us. And how would our world look then? And I feel like it wouldn't be as a fun of a place and I think a lot more artists are coming to the Central Florida area which is awesome because it really will help I think our our county grow even more the more artists we can draw here if they feel like oh you know what's going down there in Lakeland like they're doing some really cool stuff they're gonna be more likely to be drawn to coming here too so if you want to see more of Katie's artwork you can follow her on Facebook and Instagram just search for Katie Fernandez art Lastly, if you're fascinated by all things mini and pint size, you'll want to stick around to check out a recent exhibit from Winter Haven's Ridge Art Association. Miniatures and Small Works, a juried competition, received 152 submissions from all over the country. The tiny works of art were eligible for a variety of prizes and were judged based on criteria such as the level of detail shown, the type of medium used, and even the tiny frames that were chosen to enhance each piece of art. I got the chance to visit the gallery and chat with the executive director of the association, Christy Hemingway, to learn more about this delightful exhibit. Let's take a look. show I want to say this is the fourth one we do it every two years but my favorite thing about this show is that because they're miniatures because they're more portable we get them from further across the country so we you know get things from Tennessee and Washington and New Jersey and California they mail them from all over the place so that gives you 
more of a variety than our normal shows, which come mostly from Central Florida, but across the state. Basically, it has to be within a certain criteria of size, which is 25 square inches. It doesn't matter if it's five by five or whatever the, the, the it, you know, it could be one by 25. It could be whatever the variation is, just not more than 25 square inches. And then it also must be one fifth of the original size. So sometimes when artists talk to me about that, I could say, to be within the square inches, you could physically have a picture of your eye, but it wouldn't be a miniature because it would have to be one fifth the size of a normal eye. Although this year we tried to um, incorporate a little bit of small works as well, and we didn't get as many as we have in the past when people thought it was a miniature, but it truly wasn't. So it's interesting how it, how each time you do something, you try to redefine it to be more specific and then it, you still get something different, so it's interesting. Well, I've been a member of Ridge Art probably since 2012, and this show came up a couple years ago, and of course Christy sends out the flyers with plenty of notice. I knew this was coming up, so um, I, I did decide I was going to do something this year, or several of them, for the miniature show. I do oils primarily right now, and uh, that's a, I, I find it a little tougher to do in the miniature. So it is a double challenge. I favor anything with, um, that has a heartbeat and eyes. So I just naturally am drawn to the animals. That's just me though. I had a couple I'd been working on, dry brush oil, which would dry a little bit faster for me. And uh, so I, I knew I was going to, to go ahead and enter those. I had a couple wild card entries. I <laughs> something I had never done before with wood. I entered a wood and acrylic. Um, it's uh, on canvas, so it reminded me of a zebra. The idea I had in my head just reminded me of a zebra, so I called it the zebra experience, and I decided to enter that. And then one, I took a, a photograph um, using some solvents and changed it around a bit and then painted my little sheep on it. I think I explained that to you. So this was a, a time I could do something fun and it was I could throw a couple wild card uh, entries in there. 48 inches, five feet uh, tall canvases is something that does not scare me. The small ones um, I just kind of shy away from. Um, but I like to support Ridge Art I, I like to participate. It's a challenge. Uh, there are lo lots of reasons to do it. And Christy spends a lot of time and energy getting these shows together. As you can see, she does a wonderful job doing this uh, um, work that she does. So um, it's just a combination of things. <music>
What's interesting to me is because we're set up and open when the theater is open at night and the theater audiences will come through and think, oh, that's a small painting, it should be cheaper. When in, in all reality, you could have a painting this large that you paint in two hours and you could spend two months on a small miniature painting because it's so detailed and so precise, it's so much more difficult. I can see where a, a true miniature painter, which I am not a true miniature painter, uh, could spend quite, uh, quite a bit of time, as much as I do on my five foot ones, working with one single um, brush so or strand um, of uh, bristle. They, they are time consuming. My, I, and I mentioned to you before, my, my big thing is value. Can I tell what it is at a distance? And whether that be a miniature or um, a large work of art, that's, that's my, first, my first thought when I'm looking at art. So, and quite a number of these in the show meet that criteria, and my thumbs are up on that. <laughs> I will tell you that one of the things I love about the miniature show versus the other shows is sometimes people will come in and they'll say, well, I don't have any more room in my house for artwork. Well, everybody has that closet door next to another door that has about that much room in between it, and a miniature works perfectly, right? Our miniature works perfectly on a bookshelf. There's always room for it. The question is, do you really want it, you know? <laughs> but there's always room for another miniature. Our next show that will be available will be the Aviation Exhibit, and it will be at Winter Haven Municipal Airport, and it's called Aviation and Flight. So it's not just about airplanes. It could be a hot air balloon, or it could be a bird, or it could be a toy airplane. It could be anything that you think of that would make you think of aviation and flight. So I've had pictures of pilots and runways and aerial views from a plane of, of plots of land, anything that has to do with aviation and flight. And that's, I love that show because people travel and fly into the airport and then they purchase something and they take it with them to another city. And I think that's a really cool thing for an artist to sell something to somebody outside the area. We have so much talent. Now this brought some talent in from around the country. And we do have artists from different parts of the country entering uh, by mail. But um, uh, there's just such a wide variety of styles and there's a lot to learn here. The artists are great. They'll talk to you. They'll talk about their work. Um, they might even let you in their studios. So <laughs> um, it's uh, very important that we do support the arts, though, and especially for our younger, younger uh, crowd. This was the first place I really showed my art, and Christy was very supportive, encouraging. She was everything that you could want as an artist who didn't know what to do with her art. So that's how I ended up with Ridge, and I continue to support it. It's grown, it's expanded. As far as the quality, the quality is right up there. You're competing with the best. So it's, it's quite a great uh, organization. To keep up with future exhibits from the Ridge Art Association, visit www.ridgeart.org. Well, that's all I have for this month, but there's always plenty going on within the Pope County art scene. Stay tuned for a list of art events in your area. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time for more art out and about.